morning and welcome back to the Girl or Girl Bookworm. So today I have for you the historical fiction books on my shelf that I currently own that I would love to read. So basically these are all of the historical fiction books that I own because obviously I want to read all of them. So the first book that I would love to read is a book that I just recently hauled and that is City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. This book takes place in the 1940s. I don't know too much else about it but this cover is stunning and I just... I've seen so many good reviews about it, people raving about it, and I just had to have it. And it says, you don't have to be a good girl to be a good person. So that sounds like fun. So I would love to get to this, especially because it's kind of a time frame that I feel like I don't know a whole ton about. Um, it just sounds like it, it has to be good, right? Um, then I've got The Flight Girls by Noelle um, Salazar. This book is um, about women in the Air Force um, as service pilots and I guess World War II um, it kind of their story about like how they reacted it says how they went from ordinary women to extraordinary heroes which sounds like fun then this one I was recommended to by a family member and that is The Girl Who Wrote in Silk by Kelly Estes um, I don't know really too much about it um, but I was looking at this just to make sure it was historical fiction and the chapters take place in the 1800s which is really intriguing I don't know if I've really read anything that is in that time frame but it has to do with Chinese American women and immigrants and family life and that sounded really good and like I said my family member raved about it so I wanted to give it a chance so something different that I really haven't read a ton about um, then I would love to get to Ma Talk eventually at some point um, by Nicola um, Harrison. I got this back when um, book, um, not book, um, Barnes and Noble was having their big giant sale, and this takes place in 1938 on Ma Talk, Long Island, and I guess it takes place over a three month um, time frame following different storylines. I don't, again, know too much about it. Kind of a big, huge cover buy, kind of also because it was 50% off. Kind of because I've seen it all over Instagram as being beautiful, but I just, yeah. I don't have to say too much more about it, right? Then I got The Necklace by Claire McMillan. This book is um, another book that I kind of had to check to see if it was historical fiction or not. I got this off a of book outlet last year, I want to say. And it says, two generations of Quincy women, a bewitching jazz age beauty, and a young lawyer are bound by a spectacular and mysterious... Indian necklace and I believe like this family is really close until someone dies and they kind of leave behind this necklace and I think that they end up fighting over it a little bit um I don't know but this cover is really pretty and it just sounds like it could be a lot of fun um so we'll have to see um this is a sequel to a book that I've already read and you probably saw it in my last video if you watched my last video and that is When We Left Cuba by Chanel Clayton this is the sequel to um, Next Year in Havana. Yeah, I got it right. <laughs> um, and she has another book that's coming out next year, and I don't know if they're related or not, but even if they're not, the covers still match. So I feel like I would love to read this sooner rather than later so I can catch up so that way when that one is released, I can read that one and not feel guilty that this one is still on my shelf. I'm not going to talk too much about it just because it is a sequel, but it does take place in Cuba, and them trying to gain their independence, and they're changing over of... Um, leadership um when like Fidel Castro is taking over their country um so yeah I would love to get to this one at some point probably sooner rather than later another book that is a sequel is Tightrope by Amanda Quick this is the third book to The Girl Who Knew Too Much and I really can't get, wait to, I can't wait to get my hands on this because this takes place in the 30s in Hollywood and it's just a lot the series is a lot of fun I know a lot of people don't necessarily love it but I have a blast with it so I cannot wait to get to this one and see where this one goes they are more like companion novels they don't really go directly hand in hand with each other but they are still considered a series so cannot wait to get to this one um, I got this one at my local library and I had seen it all over at Target and this is called the room on rue um Oh, I learned it before. I think it's actually supposed to say, like, Emily, but I'm not positive. 
by Kristen Harmel. This takes place in the 1940s, as usual, with Nazis and World War II. And I'm assuming there's got to be a romance in here somewhere. And I don't know too much more about it, but I got it for like 50 cents. So I grabbed it one day. Another one that is a library purchase is Tigers in Red Weather by Lisa Klossman. I've been debating on hauling this because I haven't seen the best of reviews, but I love this cover and it does sound like it's something completely different than I'm used to. It takes place in, like, after the Second World War. Um, so it takes place in the 1960s, so it's different than a typical World War II novel. So I have kept my hand, my, I have kept it in my collection and I'm intrigued to see what I think about it. It looks like it might be a good time to read it in the summer since they are on a beach. So maybe I'll hold on to it till then. But we'll see. This one kind of, I guess, you can count as historical fiction. It's another time travel novel. And that is Time After Time by Lisa Grunwald. In the inside flap, it does say that it sweeps readers from the 1920s to World War II and beyond. So it sounds like it takes place over a bunch of different time periods. So sounds like it could be fun. The person who actually wrote um, The Wife, The Maid, and The Mistress is quoted on the bottom. So that makes me even more excited for this book. And I've seen good reviews. A historical romance I've got is Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. Um, this takes place a long time ago, 1879 in England. So really historical. And I don't know too much about it other than a girl who goes to college. And I guess she wants more for her life and she's got to convince um this guy that she wants that like to like join her side of the women's suffrage movement so sounds like it's good i've seen really good reviews for it so i'm hoping that i like it too and then we got two books by beatrice williams i just put this in my book haul um i don't know too much about them either <laughs> big surprise and that is the golden hour by beatrice williams and this one takes place in 1941 in the bahamas woo -woo. so that sounds really fun and intriguing because again it's different it's not the typical world war ii novel it's not the typical um kings and queens and all that it's a place that we don't really hear too much about so i'm excited for that one and then i've got Last but not least, The Summer Wives, and this one takes place in 1951. So again, not a time period that we hear too often of that I really enjoy. So hopefully I'll like those too. So those are all the historical fiction books on my shelf that I would love to get to at some point within hopefully the next year. Probably won't get to all of them, but let me know if there are any books that I should get to sooner rather than later or if there's any books that you're interested in and let me know like I said in the comments where I love to respond back and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye everybody!